Good morning guys. I have a pretty busy day lined up. Before I tell you what I'm doing, BAM! That's Kare. Good she morning. is a friend of mine. I've known her for over a decade. She's an events organizer, logistics expert, creative, like she designs her own bag. It's it's Man, I'm gonna link her details in the description box below. She's behind Bluegrass Solutions and she's very passionate about social mission, which is kind of why we're here today, but I'll let you know more. And yes, good morning. That is most, mm, he's so polite that he stood. So they are getting busy packing some dignity kits. I'm gonna give you a sneak peek as to why we're here today. And I know I haven't explained it yet. I'm getting there, guys. I just first want to make them some tea. So I'm making them a cup of tea because we are about to embark on the first Inua Dada social mission activation. For those wondering, Inua Dada Foundation is the foundation I set up back in 2014. I have an entire story to share with you today. Not only are we going to a school for an activation where we're distributing dignity kits, I do want to walk you guys through the entire Inua Dada Foundation story from beginning to where we are now and also let you know how you can be involved because a lot of you ask me like every day for the last few years you've been asking. So I'm gonna get breakfast ready, show you what we're packing into the van before we head out. We don't have a lot of time. We need to go pick a couple of people in town and then head to Chokha Slum, which I'll also tell you more about in a bit. So this is us loading the van. So these are the kits that we're going to distribute to the girls. You can see it's pretty full because the products here are supposed to last the girls um, a year. So don't mind the mess as usual, but this is what I wanted to show you guys. Um, the products that are in the dignity kit. So I call it a dignity kit because that's exactly what we're trying to do is give these girls dignity. Um, okay, so we have pads and floral pads because I've partnered with African Cotton Industries. And so they're the ones who put this kit together for me. Toilet paper. We have toothbrushes to last them a year as well. We have toothpaste um, slippers. We have some Vaseline, a really big jar, so that this can also last them for quite a while. And underwear to go with the pad. Guys, this kit is 3,000 shillings. 3,000 Kenya shillings for a kit that should keep the girls in school for one year. So the hope is that with the schools we go to, we speak to one of the teachers. They need to hold on to the kit because the girls need to come and claim these products as and when they need them. That way we're sure that they're coming to the school to attend class. You know what I mean? If they take them home, the sad reality is a lot of the time these products are sold um, because it's a competition between food and a pad, right? I know that the girls getting access to pads and panties has increased their class performance and their class attendance. So I'm pretty confident that this will be a good boost. But like I said, more later, I'll do a sit down video of the story of Inuadada. So we are ready to go. It is now just about 10 a.m. We need to hit the road. We are actually going to follow Janet Muthoni Ouko, she was previously with Elimuyetu. She's now um, really in charge of Nairobi County Education, very passionate about education. She knows this area really well. She's the one who helped me get in touch with the headmaster. So this is us on our car ride and a little bit of traffic over there, but moving. We're still in pretty good time. much we are struggling apart from learning we also have issues like as girls and so they've come to help us have an interesting time in school we have come as ladies to talk about many things with you so that you can uh, proceed to high school then college university and make a good life for yourself is that not a good thing then on my left is my boss, my boss lady. You see, the old <laughs> ladies are bosses. Yeah, yeah. 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 Gun power. You've heard of gun power? Yes. Gun power. So, Madam Janet Ouko. Hi, how about you? We're 
Remember at me? Mm. You're good, eh? Yes. Um, as big girls out there, we still think about you. Mm. We still remember the challenges that we went through as girls when we were going through, and we would want to do our part in making sure that you don't go through the same challenges. Mm. And it's why we are here today. But above all, I want to really thank Janet Mugwa. Mm -hmm. Janet Mugwa is, is, is a friend. Mm -hmm. And he designed Inua Dada mm -hmm. to source for partnerships that can help all of us to tell the world that no girl should miss out on education opportunities just because of sanitary towers. Mm -hmm. And that is why we are here today. Are, are we not lucky? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, so can we come by and welcome? Being a girl is a powerful thing. I know sometimes when you start in that time in your life when you're becoming a woman, that's what they say, when you start your period. It can come with many things, but I know Madam Miriam will explain. But I want you to know that this is a time that you can use. Take advantage of staying in school, coming every month to class, making sure you work really hard so that you can be teachers and lawyers and doctors, because we need more of you in Kenya. Yeah? And do you believe you can be these things? Yes. You really, really believe it? Yes. Because we believe it for you. So it's up to you to believe it for yourselves, okay? It's also good to give a girl dignity. Something that she can shower with, something that she can put on herself, slippers that she can wear, and a bag that she can bring to school, yeah? So for this year, I don't want you to stress. <laughs> You're fine, okay? <laughs> and I'm praying you'll use them. I'm praying they'll make you comfortable, and I pray that you succeed in life. Do you want like this one from this one? Okay, it's blessing it. Very nice in the center. You see, so it's a normal process that everyone who is in the reproductive age mm -hmm. wants to get. Mm -hmm. As you wear this one, you can run, jump, do what you want. My name is Whitney. What I can say, we are happy to see you today. Thank you for coming to our school. And we say now we can come to school. We can use the things that were given us. Now we can know how to use them. Thank you for coming to our school. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. We are now back. Um, from Maua Primary School where we were doing the Inua Dada activation earlier. I'm back home and I thought I would use this opportunity to talk about the Inua Dada story and the Inua Dada journey. In 2013, uh, Judy Kosge, who was then a reporter at Citizen TV, and Lulu Hassan, who is still currently a news anchor at Citizen TV, carried out a story called Periods of Shame. And the story featured girls in Marigat, uh, which is in the heart of Baringo County, using chicken feathers, goat hide, and other very unsanitary products during their monthly period. They use anything. Oh, nothing at all. To conceal a monthly natural cycle tied to the poverty cycle. We then brought that discussion onto Monday Special. Um, that's the show I used to host on Citizen TV. The discussion sparked huge conversation on social media that day because I had various people in the manufacturing industry and in the education sector. And I was asking, so what's going on? How is it 2013? And at that time, sanitary pads were, you know, the budgetary allocation for them was very insignificant in my opinion. And we didn't have any bill to the effect of making sanitary pads free. And then people were outraged and they were asking me, Janet, what can we do? And some of them even went as far as leaving pads at the gate of Citizen. No kidding. So I went and told uh, Farida, look, people want to do something for those girls. Um, why don't we take sanitary pads to them as a symbolic gesture, but then advocate for the budgetary allocation to be increased in Parliament? And we both thought that's a pretty good idea. She told me, you come up with everything. So I came up with the name Inua Dada because I love that it means uplifting Inua, like just restoring some kind of dignity to the girl child. We came up with the idea to, uh, to give girls in Marigat, in La Bosse Primary School, some parts. I approached Lulu and Judy and said, why don't we ask people through doing a promo to donate? We as Citizen TV are playing our part in putting an end to the periods of shame. Through the Inua Dada initiative, we want to make sure that girls in Marigat District, Baringo County, stay in school. Je, ni lipi linapaswa kufanywa ili watoto kama hawa waweze kutimiza ndoto zao maishani? 
You can leave your donations of sanitary towels and underwear at these drop-off points or send your contributions to this pay bill number. Pamoja tunaweza inua dada. And then the first lady got wind of it and suddenly it was this huge event. And so suddenly we were helping 10,000 girls in the entire Mariga district go to school for one year. And we managed to raise those funds. Royal Media raised some, a few donors donated, the First Lady's office. So we went and the Nuadada initiative was officially launched by the First Lady, uh, Margaret Kenyatta. Allowing such conditions to prevail in the 21st century is unacceptable. We gave 10,000 girls pads and then everyone went home and I was like, now what? I couldn't stop thinking about it. It was, you know, it was symbolic. It made an impact. I kind of went back to the team and asked, guys, what are we going to do? Are we going to assume the girls are now okay? Can we do more? And eventually, Citizen TV and Royal Media handed over the initiative to me. So I registered it as Inua Dada Foundation under Janet Bogwa, and this was in 2014. And then the first thing I did in February of 2014 is I went back to Labos Primary School in as much as there were different schools that were given pads, that was the school that really brought the story to light. And there's a teacher there called Teacher Beatrice Wafula, but she really cares about these girls. And I had told her in November, keep track of these girls and make sure they're attending and performing well in school. And you know what? She showed this report where class attendance had gone up from 25 to 75% and performance had gone up by 40%. And that was between November and February. And she told me, girls are now coming to school. So 2014 also saw a lot of significant uh, moments for the Inua Dada Foundation. We partnered with UNICEF, and by we, I'm literally talking about myself and my former trustee. So UNICEF um, partnered with Inua Dada to talk about the child rights, um, and we did a lot of work around that. And then October 11th, 2014 was a very significant day for the foundation. It was It's the day of the girl child, right? So we actually held one of the first national events of Day of the Girl. The First Lady wrote the opening speech that was read by the then Cabinet Secretary uh, Jacob Kaimeni. I do need to in emphasize actually that there is a partnership between the Ministry of Education and Inua Dada Foundation. I think it's important to partner with government just so that you kind of have the right information in terms of statistics, ETC, and you also have access to schools and you are endorsed by them. So Professor Jacob Kaimeni was the guest of honor. Um, we had ambassadors from different embassies. We had about 19 corporates that we partnered with who had donated towards the event and some of the proceeds from the event went to the foundation. So it was a very significant day. Access to safe, affordable menstrual health kits that will boost their self-esteem and keep them in class. I urge all of us to rededicate our commitment as a nation to maintaining equal access to education for both boys and girls. So that was a really great year. And then we also had the Inua Dada Minute, which was a series of stories that ran on television for 12 weeks, where we showed girls from different counties talking about their hopes and dreams. And that was part of our program. Okay, so 2014 was massive. 2015 and 2016, I was getting married and having a baby and the most we did, we didn't really do a lot of activations. We did more of media and advocacy, which still kept the conversations relevant. 2017 was pretty quiet, except for Day of the Girl Child, where on October 11, 2017, I talked a little bit about the issue around sex for pads and all these issues affecting girls in vulnerable areas. And that sparked a bit of a conversation. Fast forward to today, and this is what happened. I need to take a minute to step back and re-evaluate Inua Dada Foundation because there were so many people trying to pull it in different directions. People meant well. People believed and believe even today in the foundation. But I'm the kind of person who, no matter what you throw at me, it's not going to tempt me to go in a direction that isn't my passion or vision. And don't just throw money at me. Don't just throw donations at me. Understand what we're trying to do. Okay, so. We want to restore dignity to the girl child and we envision this through mentoring them, through giving them access to sanitary pads and panties and a dignity kit, which you saw earlier. We envision this through and making them understand their rights and the sustainability projects that can be in the schools, right? So I have now started intervention through activations again and I'm starting small and scaling up. So the amazing women at the Karen Country Club issued me a check and I said, and you know, they were just like, we believe in what you're trying to do. So here's a check just to bless you and you can do something with it. And I immediately was able to purchase 20 dignity kits 
picked a school with Janet Oko, who is um, in charge of education in Nairobi County, and we went to Maua Primary in an informal settlement called Choka, Choka Slum, which very many people probably don't know about. There's a lot of need there. Now, what I'm going to do in this period is monitor how is it improving their attendance and performance. Of course, it's going to need partners because one kit is 3,000 shillings for one year. And so that information is going to be on the website. I'm going to click the link below. Over time, I'll keep updating the website. And if you follow my social media and the Nuadada social media, you'll keep seeing the updates on the different categories and how you can support it. So that's where Inuadada is today. But I'm the kind of person who says, I'm not going to wait until things are perfect. I will start with what I have now. And that's why I always tell people, start with what you have now. The other thing we're doing is sanitation. So we're putting bins in schools as well so that these girls know how to dispose of them because we also want to keep our environment clean. Period poverty frustrates me so much. It's global, guys. Period poverty is basically exactly what it is. You're not able to access pads. You have to choose between pads and food. It's global. It is global. Even in the US, especially for women who are below the poverty line there, it's an issue because they're not free. And I think that's something we need to change. I know the president signed it into law implementation. We need to push for that as a country collectively and say our millions of girls who are missing out on school right now don't have to. If they're getting a free exercise book, they should get a free pad. It should be part and parcel of that. So I deeply advocate that we do away with period poverty and we really focus on menstrual health management holistically. The body, the mind, okay, the studies, because this period should not be an interruption or disruption. It should be a transition. But now we're open to partnering with you. You really just have to donate 3,000 shillings and it keeps a girl in school for one entire year. We're gonna even up that and be able to partner for those who are interested, partner you with these girls. That you know if you're donating to maybe Joyce in Lavington Primary, for example, and that's just a made up name, then you can kind of follow through on her progress, okay? So some people may prefer that, some people may not. We'll leave that option to you. You will find the pay bill number. You should get a comment back, a message back that your contribution has been received. Um, we're starting a member circle where as we grow the membership, you're able to participate in these activities. So keep following the journey because I'm very excited about where we're going. There's tons of other organizations in Kenya, guys, that are doing amazing work in the menstrual health management field. Um, I'm doing my bit. Eventually, hopefully, we'll all just come together, right? Because that's the plan. And finally, if I can address the boy-child issue, because I get asked that a lot by people. So, there will be an option um, for a dignity kit for boys. However, you need to be specific about that. I think a lot of this information you'll find on the website. I'll basically be like, read our rules and instructions and our different categories and you decide. But may I just urge, because a lot of the time it's men who ask me about the boy child, we need you guys on board. It's just ridiculous that you're constantly talking down at us or reprimanding us for not focusing on the boy. And you're a man and you're not looking at helping a boy. There's incredible men who want to. And so if you could come together, you could partner with you so that when we're going to a school that has girls and boys, come and talk to the boys. You're the ones who can understand the transition they're going through. We can do our bit, but we need to partner with you. And you guys, I'm sorry to say this, but you need to step it up. And I think you can, and I think you want to, and we're open to that partnership where you say, listen, Janet, me and my five pals, we're all guys, we want to help boys. Come, let's talk about it. Let's see how we can go together to some of these schools and do that together. So that's the story, and this is just a visual of the reality of some girls. Tissue paper, cotton wool, and pieces of a mattress. We do not need this to be their reality in 2018 moving forward. So thank you guys so much. And remember, Pamorda to Naweza in Wadada. <laughs>